let's look and see how types come together. Relationships operate out of the genetic imperatives as we looked at last week. And each of them have their own rules. So you're going to look at how they come together to see how they're designed to come together. And the primary ingredient in a relationship analysis is type. So how are they going to mesh together? What is that relationship going to be like? And how can you educate them so that they can be more satisfied, successful, peaceful, what have you? The person that is responsible for the relationship success, guess what? Projector. Where the satisfaction comes from? Generator. Where the peace comes from? Whose responsibility is that? Manifester. And reflector, of course, operating in alignment brings the surprise. So when we have, for example, a generator and a projector coming together, we have a completely different kind of energetic field than when there are two generators coming together, completely different, very, very unique to each different combination. So again, highlighting, educate them on the other type. Generators can ask, but to be fair and honest to them in relationship, they need to be asked back in return. All types in relationship need to honor each other. Otherwise, there is no true relationship. It's a not-self relationship. And here, you've read this quote before. I love it. It's my favorite. I've spread it all over the internet for years. If you allow someone to be who they are, and they allow you to be yourself, that's love. Anything else is torture. And relationship is all about acceptance of who the other person is and loving them for who they are, not what they become in relationship or what you want them to be because of the relationship. Now, if both partners are not participating in the relationship, then there will be problems. If they're not participating in the human design experiment, it can get a little bit better if one of them's participating, but you're still gonna have problems. Now, projectors have a bad reputation and from the manifester and the generator, they feel often it, it's, it, it's irritating. You know, most of the types, if they're in relationship and it's not aligned, it's gonna feel irritating. It's gonna feel uh, uncomfortable. When that being is operating out of integrity, it's gonna feel really uncomfortable. So projector initiating, with a generator or a manifester trying to insert themselves into relationship, it can be irritating. So too, generator trying to initiate with a manifester and you know the manifester not feeling comfortable with that, it's gonna be irritating. We have to go beyond these little detailed look at each individual type and see the overall big picture as well. Not just a type to type, but also what else is there that is a source of irritation, i.e. compromise. Now, every single type that we have has something so precious and needed for our Maya, so valuable, every one of us. The thing that happens is because we're operating out of integrity or alignment, we're not getting the respect, recognition, satisfaction, peace, surprise that we were designed for. And then the relationship won't feel fulfilling. So this is the most important thing that it starts off in alignment or that if the bond is broken, that we realign. And when it comes to the generator type, for example, so looking at the generator type, Generator has to be treated with respect to their sacral center. If they ask someone, say they ask the projector, would you like to go out on a date with me? The projector says, sure, I'll pick you up at 5.30. That is not as helpful as, would you like me to pick you up at 5.30? Can you feel the difference between telling the other person and engaging their sacral? The first was telling, I'll pick you up at 5.30. The second is, 
Would you like me to pick you up at 5.30? Now, that is a not-self relationship still. Why? Because projector is not designed to do any kind of picking up. <laughs> I remember teaching BG5 career and business analysis level one and my beautiful assistant who is in there with me, Leanne Wolf, you might know her on, on YouTube. She says, I have a projector friend and I know with that projector friend, I'm designed to pick her up if we want to go to the movies. So I go and ask her, do you want to go to the movies with me? <laughs> So, so different. If you do not ask that generator back, and if they're emotional, give them time to process, you are not treating them in alignment with respect to their sacral. Why? Because the sacral needs to be asked. It needs to be asked. Everything needs to happen in alignment. Now, we're all going to make mistakes. But when you're coming into this and you're attempting to remediate a relationship, the type relationship is the most important thing to start with. Okay? So we're going to go into examples of each. Of the 16 variations of relationships between our four auric types. Every single type needs to feel seen and gotten, grokked as their own type respected. They need to learn what the value of their own type is. Every single type is a gift. They all have their own spirit. Each type resonates to that. So you need to help your client understand that. Back to the generator. They need to have something to respond to. So teach them of doing the experiment, remember the experiment from LYD, sacral questions, if there are a sacral generator, how helpful that was? If we say that a generator is here to respond, we are saying that this person has an energetic availability. If that energetic availability does not respond, it's not correct for them to move forward. So if they ask, they initiate a question with somebody, say with a projector or reflector, as is correct for them, if you don't ask them back, or even if with a fellow generator, it's the most precious and valuable, purest, honest relationship you can have, sacral generator with sacral generator. Do you love me? Uh-huh. Do you love me? Uh-huh. That's the truth. The sacral doesn't lie. Okay, so we have to engage the sacral. Generators need to have something to respond to. So, example. If a paper blows down the street and lands at your feet, is life giving you something to respond to? Will you pick that paper up? What we have with a generator is the sacral energy that is available to respond, and it will or it won't life force energy moving through to engage. Engage is either neutral or push away or do something, okay? So I hope that that answers the question of generators can ask, but they need to be asked in return. Does that make sense? We want generators to understand that they need to have something to respond to. Life offers tons of response, but in relationship, we're talking about the other person. The other person needs to respect that generator by giving them something to respond to. That is why we say, wait to be asked. They have to have something to respond to instead of telling them what to do. That's how you respect a generator. Okay. So let's look at generator. When we're being conditioned by a generator as a projector, as a manifester, as a reflector, all us non-sacral beings, when we're being conditioned, we're learning about life. Okay, so it's not about not being conditioned. It's just that the generator sacral motor responds and those of us with non-sacral energy learn. Life is about learning. 